One boy, ten girls wouldn't trade it for the world. You guys couldn't last ten minutes without doing your annoying things. We could last longer than you. I bet you couldn't. Oh, really? In the madhouse, in the Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top ten episodes of The Loud House. Boy, ten girls wouldn't trade it for the world. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at some of our favorite misadventures of the loudest Nickelodeon animated family. These are the episodes that made us laugh and taught us all a little something about life and family, no matter how big or small. Also, if you haven't been catching up on the series, there will be spoilers. It's okay, Lily. Go back to sleep. Number 10, Left in the Dark. In the series premiere, Lincoln is hoping to catch the season finale of his favorite ghost hunting show. To get to the couch first, Lincoln maneuvers past all of his sisters, except one. Lucy! I always forget about Lucy! Unfortunately, a blackout means that no one can watch TV until someone resets the circuit breaker in the dark basement. With his sisters in tow, Lincoln takes inspiration from his show and ventures down into the darkness. You may want to stay close. There's no telling what could be lurking down here in the dark. There's nothing funny about this situation, although I do like dark humor. Is someone touching my hand? He may end up missing his show, but he does the next best thing by living the experience with his siblings, proving that it's always better to do things together. Sometimes it's about being there together. All of us. You forgot me. <laughs> Number nine white hair. Lincoln wants to make a good first impression with the new girl at school, without his sister's help, given their meddling track record. So you thought you'd impress the new girl by wearing this? No, 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 no. I don't need your help. I've got it all planned out. He hits his head and dreams of an exact parallel of this scenario. But with him as a rabbit named Warren living with 25 sisters. Fun fact, this was the original concept of the show before it became what it is today. And unsurprisingly, it's twice as chaotic. While Warren's tale ends miserably, Lincoln's story has a happy ending. His sisters encourage him just to be himself, and it works. So, you're new to Royal Woods? Yeah, it's lonely being the new kid in town. Maybe you just haven't met the right people yet. This episode shows what happens when you listen before you act, but only after giving viewers a look at what almost was. Number eight. Back in Black Lucy is the spooky little Duchess of Darkness of the Loud family, but when she develops feelings for a normal boy, she thinks it's time for a makeover. What are you doing? I... 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 I thought if I could be more regular and normal, Rusty's brother Rocky would like me. Her sisters try to fix her up with a new, brighter look and offer tips about normal dates, both of which end disastrously. Oops. Ow! What was that for? I thought, uh, um, uh, how about that baseball team that played the other night? It seems hopeless for the poor goth kid, but it turns out that the boy she likes actually shares her interests in all things bloody, and he thought she was too cool for him. To be honest, I thought you were too cool for me, and I couldn't think of anything to say, so I just ran. This is another healthy reminder that you shouldn't try to cover up what makes you special. Number seven, friend or foe. Lisa Loud is a four-year-old prodigy in many fields, except for social skills, according to her first report card. An A in physical education, an A in vocabulary, and an F in social skills. Perfect. Uh, wait, what? An F? Hoping to raise her grade, Lisa researches different friendship methods to try and befriend her classmate, Darcy. She secures her good grade, but Lisa didn't consider two things, Darcy still wanting to be friends, or Darcy's feelings when Lisa wants to call it off. We can still sit together. I, actually, if you don't mind, I was hoping to use snack time to brush up on my Mandarin. The second youngest Loud may be a scientific genius, but she still has a lot to learn. Friendship isn't just some academic achievement. It's about being there for someone and making life better for them too. Hopefully, having a pal like Darcy can aid Lisa in fully understanding that. You look sad. I wanted to make you feel better. But why would you want to make me feel better? Because that's what friends do for each other. Number six, 
Driving Miss Hazy. Fed up with doing chores for Lori in exchange for rides, Lincoln takes it upon himself to teach the only other of-age sister, Lenny, how to drive. Unfortunately, Lenny's heart is bigger than her brain, and teaching her is no easy task, even with the other sister's help. Next, check your mirrors. Why? Do I look bad? No, 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 no. I meant to stop the car. I can't drive in this hideous condition. During their lessons, Lincoln has a revelation. It's not enough to teach something to someone, you also have to teach in a way they'll understand. Use the blinky blink. Good, now turn left. I mean, uh, turn to your good side. After properly learning to speak Lenny, it looks like they'll pull it off until Lori sabotages Lenny's chance to pass the test. Sabotage? It's like she went and bought the dress she knew you wanted. <gasps> At least now, they have a working tutoring method, so there's always next time. Number 5. Toads and Tiaras Coach Lincoln is set on helping Lola win a coveted prize in a beauty pageant. But when his star gets injured and can't compete, Lincoln decides to train her tomboy twin Lana in her place. Unfortunately, even with all his coaching techniques, prim and perfect, Lana is not and her brother's pushiness only discourages her more. I'm sorry, Lincoln. No matter what I do, I can't be prim and perfect like these girls. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Realizing how much he's hurt his little sister, Lincoln apologizes and lets Lana perform as her old, messy self. And miraculously, she wins. I don't like what you did, but you did win. And I respect a winner. No matter how amazing the prize is, Lincoln learns that he shouldn't have tried to change who Lana really is. Because isn't her true, grubby, handy woman character what makes her so awesome anyway? Well, I've learned two very valuable lessons. One, you should never try to turn someone into something they're not. And two, if you ever ride the milkshaker, keep your mouth closed. Number four, L is for love. The loud kids find a letter from a secret admirer that is possibly for one of them. They each send signals to their respective crushes, except for doubtful Luna. The more I realized, Sam's way out of my league, dudes. It turns out that the letters are actually a gesture between their parents, celebrating the day their mom took a risk for love. My boldness paid off because here we are, celebrating the 20th anniversary of that first date. This ultimately inspires the kids to send secret admirer letters of their own. In a surprising yet subtle twist, it's revealed that Luna's crush is a girl named Sam, and that the rocker loud is a confirmed bisexual. See you later, Sam. Okay, see ya! While same-sex relationships are nothing new for this show, it's comforting to watch a Nicktoon that embraces all different forms of love. Number three for bros about to rock. Lincoln and Clyde are excited to be going to their first concert, but Lincoln's sisters warn them about Luna. She'll wanna tag along, and she can be a little overly enthusiastic about first shows. Come on, guys. Crowd surf! They all say she's nuts, but later, we get a little more insight about Luna's motivation. Her first concert changed her life, and made her the rock star to be she is today. It was like he was talking to me. Since then, she's tried to share that unforgettable experience for her siblings' first live shows, even if she becomes a little too passionate. She may be wild, but in the end, Lincoln can safely say that Luna made his first concert memorable in the best way. Pose it like you chose it. Number two, the loudest mission, relative chaos. The Santiago's, Bobby, Ronnie, Anne, and their mom, are spending the weekend with their extended family, the Casa Grandes. Bobby loves being there, but Ronnie Anne is a little overwhelmed by the large family and very little privacy. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Hey, uh, what's happening? When it turns out that they might actually be moving in, she enlists Lincoln and Lori to help change the others' minds. 
but to no avail. What do you mean you didn't convince him? He talked about the bodega for 40 minutes until the beef jerky guy showed up, and at that point, I had literally reached my limit. Anyone who's had to move somewhere new can relate to this. It's a big change, and it can take a while to adjust to. But with a little advice from Lincoln, Ronnie and just might get used to being part of such a big, crazy family. It's gonna be quite an adventure, but I'm up for it. Huh, Lincoln was right. It does help talking to you guys. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I'm glad you finally want to apologize to me. What? Me apologize to you? You're here to apologize to me! You are Are you crazy? We hire a bunch of stunt doubles to take all the hits for us, and we get off pain-free! That might just work! That might just work! Number one, 11 Louds a Leapin. It's the day before Christmas and everyone is feeling festive, except for the Louds' grumpy old neighbor, Mr. Grouse. When Lincoln tries to recover his lost sled from Grouse's yard, he finds out what's really causing the old grump's holiday blues and bands together with his family and friends to make things right. I didn't know you were from a big family. What's it to you? Well, it's just, it must be hard not to see them at Christmas. What really sells this episode is the simple story. Everyone getting caught up in the hustle and bustle of the season, but putting aside the chaos to spread holiday cheer to someone who needs it the most. This year will be the best one yet. It's no wonder the Loud family is a much-loved addition to Nickelodeon. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.